Go in the apartment to people. Or the yeah, building. there's like all the spill bacon here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's do it. Let's do it. Hans Komain, round two. <laughs> all right, so we have an interesting story because we did the, these epic interviews. They're so amazing. <laughs> and now nobody's going to see them because of hard drive failure. But um, it only makes them more epic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and they might happen. We might be able to recover that action. But um, so, man, we've been talking a lot in the last two weeks you've been here. Yeah, a bit more, but we've been talking a lot. Yeah. And you started off saying this is that this has allowed you to see the difference of you. You know, when we were setting all this right, stuff up. Right, right. What are some of those differences? Well, as I was just saying, I, I notice in the way I present my craft uh, and also teach it that my main angle perspective um, or the way I see myself is as an artist and I really look at seduction as an art form the ultimate art form let's say like like a almost like a a performance art thing you know and my book is like the credo to that performance art piece and uh, the way I look at seduction is not as a means to an end, as I see a lot of people use it as a means to to get from the other what they want, but really as a, an art form in itself, you know, like the the encounter, the interaction is the platform where where your art is created, you know, uh, with your audience. <laughs> so one one of the things that, that you make me think about that is that there's two things with that. We go back on art. We talked about that a little mm. bit in the salvageable part of the podcast that we have, right? But, but there's also this element of, of meeting people where they're at. And we've talked right. about this in the last two weeks. And so many people see seduction as a means to an end. You're right. How do you see that happening? There's a lot I could say about this, but, but where do you see guys? Well, to me, I don't know if this is your question, but this sure is my answer. <laughs> yeah, that's what <laughs> to, we want. To me. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Let me answer something completely different. <laughs> for me, seduction, the first step, and this is very practical for guys too, the first steps of seduction is always, first and foremost, to meet the other in their world. So it's not luring someone into something else. It is meeting the other in their world so they feel seen, so they feel heard, so they feel uh, felt. Uh, I, I even, like for years, I thought that was empathy. But now in my recent work, I go a step further and I say more than like meeting them in their world, it's honoring them in their world. Imagine that, that you not only know how to walk their shoes, but honor that you understand why this person made the decisions they made. You know, very practical when you see a woman and a lot of guys uh, say, oh, she's, she's a bitchy, you know, whatever. When you find a way to, to, walk this woman's shoes, why she's reacting the way she reacts, and also honor her for that. Now, if you, if you manage to do that, now you can lead her into a different world. Now, when she feels seen, felt, and heard, now you can guide her and say, hey, uh, uh, there's a different world out there, a world in which you don't have to be so, uh, say, bitchy, but uh, you can be this way, you know, and you create a different way of interacting. But that's only possible when you meet them in their world because that's the number one need that people have men women anyone in this world we all want to be seen felt and heard you know everywhere in the world where i go that's the number one desire when we have food when we have a roof above our head that's right. what we want well yeah 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 and th- there's a lot to this because i know there's guys on here going like but what does this have to do with sex what does this have to do with th- this urge that i have what does this have to do with masculine power right. and all these things this is interesting because for me, I mean, I love seduction and all that it is given. And in the last podcast that we did, uh, we were talking about how you have thought about this more than me, which is, is I don't say that to anybody, literally. Um, and, and of course, you know, if I talked with Zan or Eric Hypnotica, you know, I, I think that those that would be there, too. But in the dialogue, it was like, man, you've really philosophized about this. And, and I have a lot. Yeah when it comes down to all those things that men are dying for sexually, a lot of times what I hear is a fantasy. Yeah. But I've also lived those fantasies. And that fantasy starts out with what I call choice, a woman being allowed 
to express herself, which mm-hmm. is kind of like how you're saying, right? Uh, man, I actually forget how you just worded it, yeah. <laughs> but, but to, to honor her, to allow her to express. What's the difference between sex when it is achieved, when it is had, when it is ex- experienced with a woman who has sex done to her? Oh. Is a, is a, is opposed right. to because because you could there could be a dude there's a sex is powerful there's a dude who doesn't know any of this shit right and he just fucks no, the when, shit out when, of a girl and yeah, yeah she's good but there's a difference and we like us sometimes we want that you know of course but yeah. you, you I think any guy knows the difference between sex that is uh, s- doing to her as sex connected you know when you have a when like my my most amazing experiences where where when when a woman feels had enough trust in me to to really surrender and really go there and it's hard for a woman you know it's 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 scarier for her than than for us and uh but when she feels the trust and and can completely let go and completely go there a woman in my experience goes to places that that i'm i'm almost a little jealous of because it's so you know, it's interesting because but i'll also say it not every man knows this because he said every man knows the difference of of uh well you, you've every man knows the difference between I think, you know, having sex just for sex and, and when he really feels a connection, when he feels in love, when he feels the, the girl, it's a different experience. But then there's this thing where you say it's terrifying for a woman. And this is a distinction, I think, in sex, which I find key in, mm. in working with guys. So, like, you know, I work with guys. Is, is, there's, there's a technical component to it, which is hard because the seduction is abstract. It's just so funny because Pickup is obsessed with the, the, mm. the technical side of it. But to me, women, uh, it's terrifying to allow herself to let go. Yes. And we see this with uh, what a lot of women talk about when they're, when they're critical or when they've been traumatized by sex. And mm. uh, we're not fully going there, at least maybe yet in the conversation. But, but it's all about how sex happens and how it's done. Yes. But men, I believe, are terrified once they give all of themselves to a woman. And we see this with mm. men, uh, with a lot of the men's rights stuff. It's like, well, I gave all myself to this marriage. But where we see this in the physical act of seduction, and I love this because men mm. act crippled when this happens. And, and it's beautiful to see, but you totally give yourself to a woman. Mm. You have sex. You, you give her physically everything that you wanted. Right. But she doesn't care. At the end of it, she's like, okay, later. And, and gets up and leaves. And this is where you see guys who have tons of experience. It doesn't matter how much you have. Right. Me. I will chase her at that point. I will, I will be like, I, will, I won't be able to control it. You know, yes. it's, it's tapping into this force of nature. I guess what my question is in this is uh, letting go for a woman is beautiful. Yes. Learning to let go as a man in that situation. Is there a beauty in that that you've seen? Hmm. Uh, mm, my my thought when you were speaking this is that maybe you have you have more facility doing this than me in a way cuz i have a very much what do much, you mean by that i i see very much in my relationships and most of my relationships that i've been even if i give everything i have i never i never really like uh lost control um this is something I'm thinking about right now, you know? Yeah. And, what and does, I think maybe you have that more, the, the ability to like go there 100% and be completely like vulnerable. And uh, in, the, in the act of sex. Okay. This has happened. Like I can't really remember where it's happened. Right. But I know what's happened. But I see it happen to guys all yes. the time. And when women, when I talk to women who are friends of mine that are very comfortable with their sexuality, they talk about it. Like right. all the time, they're like, man, I, I fucked this guy and I, I just, I did what he wanted. One and done. And now he's chasing me. You know? mm-hmm. It's like every man's dream, right? Right. And so that's more or less where I see it. But where I do see it on the back end outside of the physical, um, you could be in a relationship. I mean, you, you work and you, you, you make money or you provide or you offer. And, mm-hmm. and when that's not enough, it, it, that, is, that is pain for a right. man. That is crazy, you know? Right. Um, I, mean, I, I want you to finish your thought on this because I know you're thinking about it, but if not, I can go. No, continue because I'm not sure that I really yeah, so understood it. Check this out. There, we were in this 
doing this workshopping in our groups and we were talking about what do you feel when you first meet a woman? Mm. Like, what do you feel? And guys are like, oh, I like her tits and ass, whatever. But we're like, well, really, what do you feel? Because the more we talked about it, the more we got to this point of like, like we see a girl with a guy and I'm like, oh man, I can do better than that. I can do mm. better than that guy. Like, why is she with him? Or you, like, I'm 41. Right. And then you see a girl who's in her 20s and you're like, man, if only, you know, which is fine, you know, I'll take that if only. But, but a lot of guys, you hear this throughout time, men saying like, if only I could have my opportunity, right. you know, with her and teach her things or whatever. But it's so much about leading. It's so much about providing. And now men are ashamed of that. Okay. You know, and, but so that feeling of that provision, yes. that feeling of doing for somebody, how can men learn that more? Uh-huh. Um, I'm not sure I'm, 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 um, I, I see. I How understand. Can a man it. be a leader to a woman? Exactly. Okay. Well, that is maybe for me it is key to to seduction and keep seducing your wife is really take charge, really take care, really provide in a way. You know, mm. making sh- taking one hundred percent responsibility for the the relationship. I always think it's it's a man's role, like in a dance, to to lead the dance. And so, uh, it's the number one thing to even if you don't know where you're going, it's better to lead women will will follow and and guys have trouble nowadays to even take responsibility of their own life you know they blame things outside they and and they don't take full responsibility let alone take responsibility for the glory of that relationship and by that i don't mean like take responsibility for the way she feels because that's her thing yeah but you got to hold that you got to hold her heart you got to hold that uh, relationship and say okay i'm leading this thing into glory i'm gonna do it you know and it's a it's I, I speak about three stages of a seducer, and that's the third stage. That's the most difficult of all, you know. In a first stage, we think, I'll, I'll go right, maybe this yeah, is a good yeah, way yeah, of yeah, explaining Yeah, I was just going to ask, yeah, what are the three stages? In, in, in a first stage, a guy thinks, oh, I like this girl. She can give me something that I want. So he's wondering, uh, does she like me? Does she like me? What do I do to like, for her to like me, you know? And everything he does is like based in, in fear and scarcity, you know? Right. And... Uh, and I never call these guys seducers because it's, uh, it's not really seduction. In a second phase, and this is where most guys that are in this space grow into, uh, the second phase is a phase of uh, where, where seduction becomes a practice in, in self-expression. And it's a, guy mm, who, it's, right. a guy who, it's a guy who grows into, like, say, self-development. He, he has a bit of success with women. It grows a little bit in abundance. And so he starts shifting from, do I like her? into uh, no from do does she like me does she like me to do i like her is this a good girl for me you know because i'm developing myself my skills as a man as a seducer you know and and women are almost secondary to that to my own happiness my own growth is this a good girl for me okay and in this so he's self-leading there's self-leadership right but there's a third phase, and I call it a, a phase of of beauty and it's the most beautiful of all and very few men ever go to that phase because they're too self-absorbed to go there and it's it's the phase of of leading the other and leading the relationship into glory you you no longer ask does she like me does she like me or do i like her but you say what can i do to make this woman shine Mm. what is my role in this seduction in this relationship in this encounter so so everything is great is glorious for everyone and that's both in the meeting in the in the dating but certainly in the long-term relationships and that's where i say it's your role as a leader as your role as a man to be like not only a, one of the two protagonists but also the director of that movie the the master of ceremony so to speak you know was you know you talk about these three phases and the first phase is almost like like you know you're you're <laughs> you're, you're you're fucking up you know it's yeah. it's not the way right yes um no it is the way you 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 have to go through it okay. and it's not just linear you know you could fall back because you think you're in phase two and you right. find this great girl bam phase one i know it for me you know yeah or you go in one interaction you go to phase three and then back you know but it's it's very good to see that for me it's a great analytical tool in in, in that but so so i guess for me what i could relate with is in my journey there's a point where I wanted to take. I was just so yes. sexually motivated, but at the same time, not only that, I, I objectification was part of it. Yes, you know, to to take, 
to, to have those parts in it. Yes. And it was good. But as soon as, and this is what I don't understand about guys that get in that mode and they actually get results and they, you know, experience women and whatever, and they stay in it. To me, that is almost impossible, but it's clearly possible because I right. see guys do that. Because to move into that second phase of self-expression and then giving and, and seeing the feminine was, was the natural, it was, it was pain to not do that. Yes. If I didn't go to that. Um, well, to how, me, phase one is... Go ahead, go ahead. Taking. The second phase is sharing. And the third one is giving, you know. And it's a different thing. It's a different... And there's a place for taking, I, for example, sure. in, in the erotic realm, you know, there's, there's complete different laws there, yeah. you know. And it's, taking is like imperious demands. It's just part of it, you know. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. that's a, not what I'm talking no, 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 about no, no, right no. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, that is definitely a topic that we could touch on if we get to it. But um, how long were you in that role? Because um, I think that's important of, of where you were taking or initially. Right. I mean, it, it still shows up, you know, it yeah. still shows up. Yeah. So it's not like <laughs> I'm in phase three now or it's not like that, you know, but there's a lot more of phase three in me right now than 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 it was before. What I noticed is in relationships, there was a certain period where there was, and what I'm like, I've never heard you talk about this, so you know, this is all new, but just in relation to my own life, is there was that, that, uh, you know, at first it was all that, it was all mm. taking, it was all right. like, what can I do? Right. Doing sex to somebody else or doing me to, to another yes. person and their submission. It was, it was amazing. I see guys talk about this all the time, and I'm like, man, if you're only getting there, you're missing out. Like, why? Like, go with it. But um, it got shorter and shorter, or it got more efficient of how right. to get that, or if I needed to get it back because, let's say, in a relationship, um, and for me, it's so about sex, man. You know, like, how can I achieve that? <laughs> yes. You know, if, if it's not, like, so many people are trying to achieve that with, like, I'm going to stand up for myself, and they're like, man, put your dick in her and do what it's supposed to do. <laughs> no, but you laugh, but it is the design, you know, Michael and my business partner. Now we talk about that, the design, the desire, and it's the platform of, of like the bedroom. There's, there's, you know, everything, everything is sculpted there. Everything, the, the kind of man yeah. you are, the kind of leader, it becomes apparent and it is molded there, you know, yeah. at the same time. So it's really like where you sculpt it, you know, where, where you, where you carve it out. Right. Yeah, no, I, there's I, no hiding there. <laughs> and, and I feel that. So the way I see it, because my life is so different now that it, it's vital. It's, it, yeah. If it is missing, then you are you are incomplete. Right. And and what I mean by missing, if you do not understand, if you not fully express sexually yourself, if you haven't done your three phases of yeah. taking of expressing mm. and then giving, mm. if you have not experienced all those individually and then merging them into one thing, you are incomplete. Yeah. But I see so many guys like going, like, oh, well, you know, that's, <laughs> I can compensate in these other ways. You can't, no. I, I truly feel it has to be there. But then in a relationship like mine, which has gone on, like we're, we're almost seven years mm. and dude, that was crazy. Like for two years, all we did, I went minimum sex twice a day, sometimes six, it was like too much for me. <laughs> And it, but it was so defining in how things went. Right. Now there's all these other definitions, but without that sexual bed rest yes. and without the continuance of sex, although it's not at the same hyper level as it was, um, it, you couldn't it's, have it. It's like money in the bank. You put money in the bank, and now you like you have the the interest of that. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, when we get into this this idea of seduction and sex itself. The language of sex is so different. I was just on a consult with somebody today, very new in relationships. He's had a lot of experience with women. He's young. He's young. Mm -hmm. and, and like, man, he, he's been with a lot of women, has no problem meeting women. And so this may be a little bit different for some of the people listening. They may not be able to relate with this, but you're going to get to this phase if you're a sexual man at some point. And he's like, but I met this woman and I want to be in a relationship with her. And it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for my career. Right. It doesn't make sense for who I am, who she is, her career. But I want it. And I was like, hey, man, you're going to enter into a whole new phase. And right. if you bypass this, because he's an animal, man, with work. He's an entrepreneur. He's killing it. Very young. And he's in a place where he could explode. I said, but if you don't take care of this, you know, you're 25 or whatever, mm -hmm. 26 or something right now, you're going to be 35 
they're going to be a baby walking into a relationship. What do you mean if you don't take care of this? If you don't take care of how to communicate within a relationship, right. if you don't take care of understanding the urge, and, and perhaps we should go to this as like monogamy mm. or polyamory or, or free sex or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Mm. I always tell men, and I, I, I've kind of heard your take on this in writings or going back and forth on Facebook, but at every point, a man is going to want to give himself to a woman mm. and he's going to get drunk by it. How do you manage that? Because mm. I'll feel, many women, like, like it's over a hundred where I'm like, I will marry you and I will have kids with you. Wow. You know, sexually. I mean, I could have just met her that night, but it was so intense. Right. And to me, that's the biological urge. It's beautiful. I'm a little jealous of that. I, cause I never, I never felt that. I felt a strong, like desire, desire to sound like really like, and wanting to consume her and really thinking I could spend the the rest of my life with this woman, you know, the sound, the sound. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a Portuguese term, and it basically means erection. But it's also like the sound. The sound. They also use it for desire, you know. It's my friend Michael uh, came with that word, and I think it's beautiful. So I I had that, and I even remember now being with a woman that I thought was perfect in every regard. Yeah. The sex was great. The connection was great. I was like, I wasn't thinking of any other girls, you know. But I, I still did not think I want to marry this woman and have kids with her. And I still also knew at the same time, at one point, my cock is going to say, you already fucked her, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, that experience that you had with a hundred women, I, I, I didn't have. I, didn't. Well, I mean, I could or be not exaggerating, yet. but it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. of. It's, yes. it's pretty, like, I mean... Uh, in, in a way, it's a dysfunction, you know, which I had to come to terms with. And I see this a lot with right. men um, that I coach that they'll see a woman and they'll be like, I want her, I want her. Well, why do you want her? Why do you, why, why do you want her? Why, why do you have to have her? Well, because like, I like her. It's me. She's my type. I'm like, you don't even know. You haven't even experienced. Right. You haven't even seen her make a decision for you or against you or, or let alone how she has sex with you. Like, how can you even say that? But, but would you say it's a, it's a thought? Because I'm I'm a big defender of that feeling, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. that it <laughs> it tells you where to go. It's a very important primal feeling. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. this is also goes back to what we originally talking about. That first phase of taking. That yeah. first phase of taking has giving in it. Yes. And guys deny that of themselves. Right, 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 right. This right. is this is what I totally hate about. You surrender to your desire. You know. Yes. Pickup ignores this. Yeah. And like I said, when I was workshopping with these guys, it was like, no, man, I want to give to her. I want to provide for her. Like yeah. I could do good for her. I don't know her. I don't know anything about her. I don't even know how I would provide for her. Right. That's my urge. And it's also the expectation of what a woman will have in a relationship as well. Is like, you know, do this for me. Like yeah. have, have this for me. Like, nobody's thinking about this, but in, in the fights, it comes out. Yes. <laughs> So, so yeah, I see what you mean now. It's very true. Like in pickup, you see that they, they try to minimize the desire or when they feel it like not look like it, they try to appear non needy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because they are. Needy. When do you, when do you chase a woman? When do I chase? Yeah. Whenever I feel like I, I, I really like her. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, it's this is another example. People always say, yeah. oh, chasing is bad. I think chasing is the greatest oh, thing in the, the world. Best. I it's agree 100%. Yeah. Being attached to the kill, that's the problem. You never see the, the, the lion uh, not chasing. He's chasing with everything he got, you know? But what he doesn't do when he doesn't get the kill, he's not sitting there, fuck, did somebody see me? And, <laughs> you know, did I get rejected? Yeah. You know? He's not attached to the kill, you know? And the chase, the chase is essential to every seduction. I would go as far as saying that every woman, she wants to feel chosen. She wants to feel fuck, you know? She, she wants got to be me. worked for. Yes. He, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm the prey. I got preyed on. Uh, no. He, no, no, absolutely. hundred percent. I agree mm. with you. And I've never understood why guys get so against the chase because, and I get why they're saying it's because it. they're needy. They don't want to lower themselves. Yes. They don't want to be rejected. They don't want the same thing to happen again, but you're missing. Yeah. You're, why would you want a woman to chase you? Like how unfulfilling that is. Mm. Like when guys like build up all this stuff in their life so that women come after them and, and I'm all for you getting stuff or whatever, yes. you know? Like it, those things help, but oh yeah, dude, it, it's it's. Have you ever gone? So I've done a lot of drugs. And if you've been with somebody, let's say you're at a strip club and you have cocaine or ecstasy, which is crazy. It, you you 
game over, man. You like nobody can compete with that in certain environments, like where people want those things and do them or at a Vegas club. And that guy's going to have some action. Right. But here's my problem with that every time is that one, they choose you too much. And the feeling of sex with that is, is not nearly as fun. Mm. The other thing, too, is, is you got one woman. There might be 10 women chasing you. You got time for all of that? Right. Like, one, you, you, you don't want that. It's just too much drama. And after one or two, you know, depending on your appetite, it gets kind of old. It's, it, it's, it's interesting. I interviewed once uh, Pharrell Williams. You know Pharrell Williams? Yeah, yeah. The, like yeah. the producer. Wow. Yeah. And uh, hello. It's okay. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> and, uh, and he said this to me. I said, I said, is it true with fame? You get, you get all the, you get the women you want. You get all the women you want. Yeah. And he says, no. And I said, why don't you get, not get the women? He says, it's too hard to get through all the women that I want me so I can get to the women I want. It's yeah. too hard because there are too many of, of yeah. the, the women coming for I've me. I've never been in that situation, but I totally <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> relate. No, but I totally relate. Like, like. Yes. Like when you talk about uh, Kenya or different areas, like right. where, the, the, where the roles are kind of reversed, dude, it's the same thing. Right. You know, why would, this is something that guys don't get. Um, this is another thing too, which kind of goes into the same thing is like, if you can get hard too easily, like if, if it's too easy for you to get aroused and you don't want to fuck your girlfriend or a girl that you're dating or whatever, and they just take advantage of you, it's the worst feeling, right? It's the same thing when, oh man, it's for real. Like, whenever I talk I'm about trying it. to. <laughs> okay, okay. Dude, it's a curse, man. If you, <laughs> if you can perform on command, and there were times where I could like come on command too, and they would just, it, it made, it's not, not a good thing, man. Um, and I get it. If you can't come, like it's right. hard for you, or it's hard for you to get an erection. It like, it, now I'm older. And so that's like a reality that comes in. But like, dude, when I was, when I was like 32, 33, it was, oh, man, there were people like demanding that shit or, or when you get in that roles with women and there's lots yes. of women around or whatever weird thing and stuff like that. You're happens. fucked literally. Dude, it's not good. Yeah. You are fucked figurative and literally figuratively and literally. But, um, man, yeah, it's, it's that thing where when there's too many women that want you, you don't get the women that you want, but also you don't get to pursue women right in that way. And it's almost toxic. Mm. Like it's disgusting. Yet so many men want that. Mm. Well, I think it's a great experience to have that sense of abundance. So you, you understand the other side, you know, you understand what women go through, what the hot women go through. Totally. Like when we had it in, in Africa or, or Romania, uh, where you're more like the desired and mm -hmm. it's great to understand. But to me also, like you said, my own desire, my own tizau, is holy, you know, nothing is more important than feeling that, you know, it's, it's, it's worth pursuing in itself, you know, and, right. and to pursue a woman because of that, that's, that's part of it. That's a, the greatest thing. You know, I'd rather feel that, you know, and be rejected than the other way around. 